Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are tackling question number 6 of 1000 and today's question is what is the best computer for video editing? So in this video, I will break down the specs for a great entry-level computer for video editing, including all the programs and softwares that you need to install on your computer to make it faster. I will also share all the plugins that I use for my own editing workflow. So let's jump right in and talk about the computer for video editing. So I have a computer here, I'm just gonna open it. So we have two main computers, we have the desktop and we have also the laptops. So which one among these should you choose? Now both have advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of uh, desktop computers is that um, they have excellent cooling system number one and also easy for hardware upgrades like you can upgrade the graphics card, you can upgrade the processor and a few other things. However, they are bulky and not travel friendly. You know, you can't carry your desktop everywhere you are going. <laughs> that is the biggest disadvantages with a desktop. I started editing my videos using desktop computers because of their excellent cooling system. So I could run the whole system for a few days without having to shut down. And I wasn't really worried that maybe I might fry the processor or something like that. So. That is the main reason why I have been using desktop computers. But I eventually switched to laptops because of their portability. I can take my laptop anywhere I'm going, copy memory cards while I'm shooting and more advantages of its portability. However, the downside of laptops is that um, they are very difficult to upgrade. You can't upgrade the processor, you can't upgrade the graphics card. Additionally, their cooling system also is not the best, which is why I use uh, external fan to keep things cool. So if you are a laptop user who wants upgradability, you likely need to buy a whole new machine with higher specs. Ultimately, the choice between whether you should get a laptop computer or a desktop computer really comes down to personal preferences. So no matter what type of computer you choose between a desktop or a laptop, here are the entry-level specs that you need to look out for when you are getting a computer for video editing. Okay, the first thing is the processor. So when it comes to the processor, an Intel Core i5 or AMD Ryzen 5 processor with at least four cores and preferably uh, hyper-threading for eight threads is a good starting point. When it comes to the RAM, the random access memory, ideally you are going to need at least 16 GB of RAM. This will allow you to handle basic editing tasks without too much slowdown. When it comes to storage, a combination of a solid state hard drive and uh, a hard drive is recommended. So on your SSD or the solid state hard drive, that is where you install the operating system or the software that you are going to use for editing and the current project files for faster access, for easy access, and also for smooth editing uh, workflow because SSDs are usually very fast at reading uh, files from your computer. So on your HDD or the hard drive, that is where you're going to install your completed project as well as your media library. So in terms of the capacity of these hard drives, at least aim for a 256 gigabytes uh, SSD as well as at least one terabyte of a hard drive. Another hardware component that you need to make sure you have correctly in your computer is the GPU or the graphics card. Though it is not really that essential for basic video editing, it can significantly improve the performance of your system. Especially for handling things like effects, transitions, and higher resolution footage, you really need a good graphics card as well. And I would advise you to look for something like uh, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 or AMD Radeon RX 570 with at least two gigabytes of graphics memory. Another thing to consider is your operating system. So in 2024, I would recommend at least get a computer that can install Windows 10, or if you are on Mac, at least Mac OS. While some editing softwares can run on older versions of operating system, having a current operating system ensures compatibility and security of your computer. Moving on, another thing that you need to make sure you have it correct is the monitor that you're going to use for video editing, because this is where you actually look whilst you're editing. So getting a monitor with at least full HD resolution, that is 1920 by 1080, will be a good starting point. However, a higher resolution display like a 2K or a 4K monitor can have a lot of editing room or editing space and sharper visuals, especially if you are planning to edit high resolution footage. Now, those are the entry level specs that you need to look out for when you are selecting a computer for video editing. Now, sometimes you can have all these specs that I just mentioned or even higher specs than these, but your computer can't seem to run faster. When you try to play certain video files, the playback is not so smooth, very slow, jittery, the video looks choppy. 
Sometimes this is not because the computer doesn't have enough specs, but because there may be drivers that are missing in your computer or in your operating system, or maybe certain softwares that carry codecs which helps to play certain video files are not installed in your computer. The other reason is that maybe you are trying to play a video file that your computer can't handle. Maybe your computer is just really slow and it can't handle that video file. The easiest way to edit is to edit using proxies. So I'm gonna attach another video where I explained about how to create proxies, especially in Adobe Premiere Pro. So with that out of the way, let me show you how to configure your computer to make sure that it has all the drivers, all the plugins, all the softwares, and everything that you're going to need to make sure that your computer runs smoothly. I'm going to use a Windows computer to do all this and all the softwares, plugins, and the links of the things that I'm talking about in this video will be available for free download in my course, Video Editing Pro. All this stuff are there. You can just go there and download them for free. So the first step is to back up your computer. Copy all your important files and documents to an external hard drive before you format your computer. And after you are done that, then you can format your computer. And to format your computer is very easy. You can just download Windows 10 or Windows 11. All these softwares are available for free download in my course, Video Editing Pro. After your computer is formatted with a new operating system, the first thing to do is to install all the drivers for your computer. And for that, I use a software called Snappy Driver Installer. Like I said before, you need the drivers for all your hardware components for your system to run smoothly. Snap Driver Installer can easily do this for you. It scans your system to identify hardware components and checks for missing or outdated drivers. It can download all the necessary drivers automatically from its vast offline uh, library. Eliminate the need to search online for each device. This is really handy. After all the drivers have been completed and installed, the first software that I usually install is WinRAR. WinRAR is a software program for managing compressed files on Windows computers. So if you download a software that is compressed or zipped, you can unzip it with WinRAR to extract files. It's completely free. You can download it on my platform. The next program or software is Keylight Codex Pack. Keylight Codex Pack is a software package for Windows computers that helps to play different types of video and audio formats. Without this codex, you might encounter an error whilst you are playing your video or your audio, or be completely unable to play certain media files on your computer. Don't blame the computer spec. Sometimes it's these codecs that are missing on your computer. The next software that I usually install is QuickTime. QuickTime was a media player application developed by Apple that could play various video formats, including its own MOV format on Windows computers. So if you shoot your videos in Apple's MOV formats and you wanna play such videos on a Windows computer, you need an application like a QuickTime to be able to play such kind of videos on your Windows computers. This is really important. Away from QuickTime, we move on with a VLC player. One of the VLC's biggest strength is its ability to play a wide range of video and audio formats. It supports uh, popular formats like uh, MP4, AVI, MKV, FLV, MP3, and many more, often without requiring additional codex packs. Next up on the list, we have Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the software that I use to edit most of my videos. Adobe Premiere Pro is a professional grade video editing software application designed for editing videos, commercial, uh, films and many more. The next software I install is Adobe After Effects. Adobe After Effects is a powerful software program used for creating motion graphics, visual effects, and uh, compositing. Next on the list, I usually install Adobe Media Encoder. Adobe Media Encoder isn't exactly for video editing itself but rather it acts as the behind the scenes engine for processing and exporting your videos. Then on my computer, I also install Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is a powerful software application for raster image editing, graphic designing, and uh, digital art. Next on my computer, I also install Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition is a very powerful digital audio workstation, DAW, designed for a variety of audio editing, mixing, and uh, mastering tasks. Then I also install a software called Handbrake. Handbrake is a handy tool for converting video files, potentially reducing their size whilst maintaining good quality. So if you want to send a video or post a video on social media and the file size is so big, you want it to be small yet have good quality, uh, Handbrake is the best uh, software to do that. Then I also install 
Optical Flares. Optical Flares is a powerful plugin for Adobe After Effects, specifically designed to create uh, realistic and customizable lens flares for your video projects. Next on the line, we have Element 3D. This is my favorite plugin of After Effects. Element 3D is a very powerful plugin for Adobe After Effects that allows you to work with uh, 3D models and animation directly within After Effects interface. Then we have Seva plugin, another favorite plugin of mine in Adobe After Effects. Seva is a free and a popular plugin for Adobe After Effects, specifically designed to create glowing energy effects, light beams, and uh, lesser swords. Then I also install Red Giant Shooter Suite. And the plugins that I use mostly from this uh, suite is the frames. This tool allows you to quickly adjust frame rates, resolution, and add basic color correction to your footage before editing. Then from the same suite, I also use Instant 4K. This tool offers basic upscaling capabilities. You can actually use this plugin to convert your HD video into a proper 4K video without really sacrificing quality. Then in the same suite, I also use Pruro Eyes. This is a powerful audio video synchronization tool. It automatically syncs footage from multiple cameras even without clapboards or timecode, saving you significant time compared to manual syncing. Then another suite that I usually install is the Red Giant Magic Bullet Suite. And I mainly use two plugins from this suite, and uh, number one is Colorista plugin. I use Colorista plugin to color correct my footage. It allows you to balance the colors and adjust contrasts. Then the second plugin that I use from this suite is um, Magic Bullet Looks. Magic Bullet Looks offers a vast library of uh, preset color looks uh, that emulate classic film stocks, cinematic styles, and artistic effects. It is really handy. When I started my videography, I really didn't know how to color grade, so I used to just pick one of these looks and slap them on my videos, and it used to make my videos look a little bit better. Then I also install another suite called Red Giant Keying Suite. The suite includes a powerful plugins specifically designed for keying out green or blue screen backgrounds from your footage. I mostly use Primate Care and uh, Key Correct from this suite. Very good and advanced tools, especially if you are into green screen and the blue screen. This is the plugins that I use. Next on the line, we have another powerful plugin called Film Convert Nitrate, which I usually install in my computer for video editing. Film Convert Nitrate is a powerful plugin for video editing, specifically designed to add uh, the look and feel of classic film stocks to digital footage. So if you shoot your videos with the DSLR cameras, chances are that your footage will really look like this video was shot with a DSLR camera. So using a plugin like Film Convert Nitrate, you can actually convert that DSLR look into something that looks like uh, a cinema camera. The next plugin that I usually install that I cannot end this video without mentioning is the Neat Video Pro. Neat Video Pro is a video editing plugin uh, specifically designed for reducing noise, grain, flickers, and other imperfections in your video footage. And lastly, the other things that I install on my computer for video editing is my favorite fonts. So I have a library of my favorite fonts. Fonts are so important. So if you are doing titles for your videos, you also need to have really good fonts. I have also given you all my free uh, favorite fonts that I normally use on my videos. You can also download them in my course Adobe uh, Video Editing Pro. So I have mentioned a lot of plugins in this installation package for your video editing computer. So in my next videos, I'll be doing, um, I'll be going through the details of each and every plugin to show you exactly how it works. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so so that you don't miss out when these videos start dropping just after this one. Otherwise, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. This is it. Peace.